These are the Sarsen stones. Uh, they were put up in the center of the site. Archaeologists say around 2500 BC, roughly 4,500 years ago, give or take. And they were carefully aligned to line up with movements of the sun. And so, if you were to stand in the middle of, let me bring up my laser pointer here. If you were to stand right here in the middle during the summer solstice, which is going to happen actually the midsummer sunrise, the heel stone aligns with the slaughter stone, and you will see it exactly like this. Now, the sunrise will be in several hours, and uh, we will most likely rejoin that might be in the middle of the night for some of you but uh, we will be here and we will be watching at the moment the live broadcast is just showing a beautiful sky as you can see there's clouds so it's very unlikely we're going to see the sun we may see the sun rise in about, let's see how many hours will that be? It's gonna be around uh, nine o'clock Pacific time when the sun is rising. This is the shortest night of the year. I can give you the exact time one moment, please. It's on our website at sociesnap.com and it's specifically sunrise is 3.52 GMT, 3.52 GMT Greenwich Mean Time. It's currently 8, 11 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time right now. The sunset will be in 26, uh, it's actually at 2026 would be eight. 26 p.m. So let's talk about Stonehenge, Earth's solar timekeeper. Marking the movements of the sun was clearly important to the people who built Stonehenge, as they went to such enormous effort to carefully line up the monument. There is very little evidence as to what ceremonies may have taken place here. There is a few clues from excavations within the stone circle. However, no one really knows. It's been the subject of mystery for a very, very long time. But still, we can imagine the people gathered at the monument to celebrate the midsummer, the sunrise, although only a few people would be able to directly observe the important alignment. So hopefully, in a few hours, we will have that 
answer. Once again, to illustrate, you can see the heel stone right here in the midsummer sunrise, the slaughter stone aligns perfectly with these arches. So if you're standing right here in the middle, you can see a perfect alignment. Why would they do this? And how could this persist nearly 5,000 years later and still maintain that same solar alignment? My presentation to you is about symbols. I found a very interesting video, which I will share inside of our group. There are 32 symbols found in caves all over Europe. And jean vier von Penziger has a TED talk about that. One of the symbols that I've been kind of obsessed with for the past few days is this rock's carving, which looks like an arch with a dot in the middle of it. It's very humorous to see the comments on her video. Caves were the closest things that early man had to a refrigerator. Kids' drawings always end up in the refrigerator. Very clever. The 32 symbols were standard on early keyboards. I'm almost certain that one of these signs said, whoa, let's remember a time we almost died fighting that mammoth. The comment section, while funny to read, is telling us that we're really not that far away from our cavemen and cave women ancestors. We are meaning-making machines. We learn by association. We believe that the authorities tell us is true. We rarely check facts. Accurate knowledge is hard to find, and you must know how to search for it and filter out the G, garbage. Going back to the live stream. We can see the alignments. Can't see the sun, but we can see the alignments. It's the power of synchronization, otherwise known as sync moving in sync, in sync with the world. The ancient navigators understood this power of synchronization. There we have, we can see a bird that's just landed on the stone. There's a power of synchronization. We can feel it. Another interesting TED talk is our brain hallucinates our conscious reality. With more than 6.7 million views, Anil Seth has a great video, you can look it up, about how our brain hallucinates our conscious reality. I built a tool called SociSnap. Little did I realize that I was actually opening a doorway into a whole new world. We just launched our ancient emojis. And for the past week, I've been almost obsessed with this one symbol. It's highlighted in yellow. What does this mean? Think about that. Why do we need symbols? Why is that thumbs up? almost become a universal symbol popularized by Facebook. Well, it's instant recognition and emojis. This is the OK symbol, but it's also the symbol we use for SociSnap of symbolizing snapping our fingers. It's the closest thing we can have. New symbols entered our consciousness, such as the toilet paper emoji. How did this come about? And the eye and the heart. 
Why do we need symbols? As we can see, the symbols were very important to the ancients. These ancient monuments built, some say, 5,000 years ago. Ancient astronaut theorists say it was more like 50,000 years ago. The truth is we really do not know. What we do know is that as a culture, we are obsessed with symbols. Where do these symbols come from? And what is the format and why does SociSnap have these emojis? How many emojis are there in total? Well, it's actually a staggering number. There are almost 150,000 symbols now in the Unicode. The Unicode is the universal standard code that we all agree on that governs all characters and emojis. It was actually started about 20 years ago. So earlier today, I was seeking the meaning of this symbol. And today, I'm going to teach you how to find meaning of anything. I built a search engine because I was not satisfied with the results that I was getting from the other search engines. I found that they were more interested in giving you the authoritative answer than the accurate answer. So if I search for find hex code of a Unicode character, the number one result is Unicode Lookup. I found this website for the very first time. I pasted in from SociSnap this character, and I found the hex code. I found the HTML code. Going back to Stonehenge, you can almost see that if we could see the sun, if it was shining somewhere, it might be going through those arches. Well, at the moment of sunrise in a few hours, it will be. And we will be here on this channel observing it. Stay tuned to social media for the exact time when this is going to happen. It's on our website at socsnap.com. The exact Greenwich Mean Time, it's there. Let's continue. So is it really the runic letter Y? Well, we have a search engine. Let's ask it. I typed in runic letter Y into EarthGrid and ran a search. And I found the Sons of Vikings, an online store with hundreds of Viking-related jewelry. Full tables are right there. I also found rune translation. I went deeper into this. And I found that the Elder Futark, which is the majority of the runes, that are built into jewelry says it's the letter Y. Okay? The U tree, or symbolizing the word dream. But then I found the younger Futark from the 8th to 12th centuries. It's the letter Ur, symbolizing rain, snow, and dross. So I put these side by side, bringing up my laser pointer. Here's the letter Y. It looks like a, a line, a vertical thing, and then another thing, EO, U tree or dream. But here's the letter U. It looks almost exactly like this symbol, except there's a dot. What is that dot? Does that look sim similar? 
Not in any way, shape, or form. Did Unicode get it wrong? Yes, they did. Do they actually know what they're talking about? No, they don't. Symbols allow us to ask deep questions. I don't believe that this symbol is the runic letter Y at all. It does not look anything like it. I think the symbol is an archway and the dot is the sun. It is a modified symbol of the letter U, not Y. Symbols allow us to tell stories. This is what sunrise looks like when people could gather together. And as you can see, the symbol tells us the story of connection with the sun, a deeper meaning. So my counsel to you is do your research. Don't just take the authority's answer to your question because it's probably not so. Our goal at EarthGrid is to give you the answers to the websites that may not be found. That little Viking store that sells runic jewelry. The little blog that never gets found because the authorities don't allow it to be found. Our website will find pages and searches and even questions. Snap gives you the tool to distance and condense 150,000 symbols into a handful. In our laboratory right now, we are working around the clock to build a system that is going to personalize the emojis for you. Once you have 150,000 emojis to choose from, how can you possibly, on your small handheld device, pick an emoji that means something for you? In the coming years, we will build a system that will allow you to bring the symbols of the world and meaning to it. Begin your quest by typing something into the EarthGrid search engine and clicking the space bar. Going deeper, choosing from the drop down menu and clicking the space bar again. You'll quickly discover things that you didn't even know were possible. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the other side of the eclipse.